One of the most curious cases for me, and I think a lot of fans over the years, has just been how TNA slash Impact, because we're going back a while now here, uh, has treated Jake something where by no means is the dude a jobber, but it just seems like ever since he shed the Cousin Jake gimmick, he's been in the same spot on the card. Um, and he just hasn't reached the level that we expected. Now, this is has nothing to do with him personally. I think I would I would say most fans like him. I know my kids do quite a bit. I've um, met him a couple times, but this was like prior to TNA uh, at indie shows. So I was pretty familiar with the dude before uh, Impact ultimately signed him. And, you know, I always like this look. People people like his look. He looks like someone who can beat you up, which you cannot say about a whole lot of wrestlers these days. He looks like someone that can whoop your ass. But I think most, most fans at this point figured that he would be somewhere around the top of the card. And I remember specifically uh, when Scott DeMore came out once upon a time and made the TNA world title uh, an official title. This is back when Moose was holding it. He put Moose in an impromptu match against Jake something, but the way that he announced him, the way that he came out, you felt like something big was coming. Like this was the, the, the first step to him elevating to the next level. And I know he had some personal issues and that's always going to come into play for anybody. So I know he was off TV for a while, uh, I think he even stepped away from the industry for a while. But then he ultimately comes back, and we're just still not seeing that push that everyone is thinking was going to happen. Now, I kind of stand by what I say. I think he is going to win the X Division title off Ali by the end of the year, which would make everything null and void that I'm saying. Uh, that That is my gut. But at the same time, you know, what are they doing? Now, if you go back to the top of 2024, there was a six-way match at the Snake Ice taping, six-way X Division match that was really good, and he won. I remember watching that, you know, thinking to myself, I don't even like these kind of matches, these, these car crash matches, but he, I really enjoyed this particular one. And then I got on the podcast after people were saying who showed up at Snake Eyes, and I said, well, nobody did because they're going with their guys for once. It felt like they're going with their guys. Like It felt like it was the beginning of his big push. And I will even, um, on a more positive note, go back and say uh, he was one of the maybe two storylines that, re- that they started building from Hard to Kill up to Rebellion. Like They did build his... Uh, his contendership for the X division title quite well. And he's even come out and said, I'm, I'm going to win the title this year, which means he's going to win the title this year. So um, again, if that happens great, you know, like that means it's start, he's starting to elevate in their eyes, but right now it just feels like they don't see it. Like the company doesn't see it and maybe they do, but it is just coming off like they don't because he loses the X division title match. And then he, you know, the dude needs a win at this point. Moves on, and his first, uh, you know, mini feud is with Hammerstone. And like, wow, this looks amazing on paper. And it's something that could benefit greatly from a build because from a character standpoint, he needs it. And then the match gets canceled, which maybe is a blessing in disguise. Because this is something that could be a really big match for them. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise. So they can choose, and again, we're not backstage. We don't know their thinking. We're, 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 we're going with the information they have given us, which is what we are seeing on TV. He goes on a rebellion. He can wrestle anyone. They can, give, they can feed him Casey Navarro instead of putting him in a mean, meaningless digital media title match, which all those title matches are meaningless. They could have just fed him Casey Navarro because he was probably going to lose the Hammerstone. Maybe he wasn't, but I'm pretty sure he was. I think most fans would agree with that. Instead, he gets Rich Swan, 
a much smaller opponent, and he loses. So the guy has absolutely no momentum. I haven't watched this previous episode where he teams up with Cody Diener, and that's going to be interesting because uh, the Rascals don't beat anybody. At least in 2024, they don't. Um, Jake is not really beating anybody. Cody Diener does not beat anybody. So I would imagine the Deaners won that match. I'm going to call them the Deaners. But if you if you compare Jake to Cody, all right, because like when they split them up, you think, okay, cool, they're going to push this dude. If you if you look at the the trajectories of both, neither are really any higher on the card than they were. They might be a little a little higher. Deaners probably a little higher. Well, he's probably been bought. Uh, Cody Deaner's probably been bumped down now because of his current current gimmick. But if you think he was the giver, you know, I'm talking about Cody Deaner here, and then he moves on to Violent by Design, which was really, really worked for him. And I think he even feuded with Jake temporarily. And then he goes to do the design, takes a step down, and he's taken another step down as Cody Deaner. But the character has progressed. That's the difference here. He's had a, 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 a major progression in character where Jake has absolutely no progression whatsoever. From the day that he broke off from the Deaners and became Jake something, which was better than Cousin Jake, he's the same exact person that he was then. He's in the same exact spot on the card than he was then. And it's just very curious. And I'm going to be repeating myself here if you're someone who listens to all my uploads, all my podcasts, because this is something I've been saying over the course of the past month. They have to find a way to update his presentation to make him look like more of a star instead of just a dude. He is the only wrestler on that roster walking around backstage in his underwear. He has no shirts. He has no jacket, no warm-up gear, no nothing. He looks like he's always ready to compete. And it stood out to me when uh, at Hard to Kill at the very beginning when Eric Young came out and was making his speech and all the wrestlers came out, he was like the only one dressed to compete. <laughs> he looked like he the, he was in the next match. Um, and I think, you know, if, if you really go back, you look at, look at any company and wrestlers just walking around backstage, like they're not walking around half naked, you know, like, there's something to give him a little more personality. Then when he talks, it's very and, and loud noises. It, it, it is something that I'm not sure in modern wrestling works. The whole, you know, aggressive, big caveman, brawling brute type of dude. I just don't think that works on wrestling television right now. But, you know, he, he just always... Oh, Always half naked, no matter where he is at the building, no matter what time it is. He comes out. The, the entrance is as generic as it can possibly be. I've said this many, many times over the probably last year or so, that they should say he's six foot whatever, 200 whatever, hails from here. Like They need to make it a, a long, big, grandiose entrance, and he's got to be... You remember like how Goldberg used to come down and obviously they're not going to have sparklers and shit going and, and dynamite. I mean, dynamite, they got a freaking AEW, uh, you know, fireworks and all that. They're not going to do that. But the way Goldberg would come down and he's, you know, throwing the uppercuts and the kicks, like it's just a big giant presentation where you're like, man, a real badass is coming down. And that's just really missing from what he does. Like if the gimmick is for him to just be, around you know huffing and puffing and grunting and uh, loud noises and being naked then you know do that but then when you introduce him he's got to come out and just look like an absolute beast absolute monster and then go out there and whip some serious ass but the, all these things are not happening he's just coming off like a very generic dude and this is not a shot against him it is not a knock on him in any way because as i said i think most impact fans enjoy him want to see him get to the next level but like i'm kind of out on him at this point because they're just not giving us something to care about in regards to him 